Hello everyone, this is Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Redline Controls, and today we're going to convert a G310 or G3 database to our CR3000 models. And we're going to do that by importing a Crimson 3.0 file into Crimson 3.1. Then we'll take these navigation buttons that appear physically on our G3HMI and appear here on our web server and turn that into a pop-up menu in Crimson 3.1. So you can see I'm clicking on the buttons on the left hand side. I can also physically click on the membrane buttons on my G3HMI and in the lower left hand corner I've got a menu button that brings up this main screen. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is import this into Crimson 3.1. Now, real quick, the way this looks in Crimson 3.0 is I've got my main pages here, and then I have these items on the left-hand side. These represent those membrane buttons, and the green ones have actions. If I double-click on one of these green ones, we can see what that action is. In this case, it's go to page, home. All right, so we need to Keep that in mind when we're making our pop-up menu in Crimson 3.1. Inside Crimson 3.1, what I'm going to do is choose File and Import. And I'll choose my G310 uh, CD3 file. It's a 640 by 480 display, and it brings up some options for me in converting the file over. I can convert it to a 10-inch graphite HMI. I can also uh, put it in a 7-inch HMI if I want to, and I have a few choices on scaling it for my 10-inch HMI. In this case, I'm going to choose the scaling that'll do 125% on all of the items in the display. The first thing I want to do is change this IP address so that I can show you the before and after on my web server. And the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and take a look at these pages and we can see everything converted over, no problem. But I'm going to prefer new style. So I'm going to Pages, Images, Pick, and I'm going to choose Prefer New Style. And this will load the updated symbol library into Crimson 3.1 and into our database. So let's look at those tanks again. This is the before. I haven't yet clicked on the display page. And remember, changes occur once we click on it. I click on it, and we see those smoothed out items now, these smoothed out symbols in our database. So we've got to come up with a pop-up menu that will replace those physical buttons. So you can see here is my CR3000 database. The nice thing is I can have 3.1 and 3.0 running at the same time. And we see these things don't exist anymore. So we need to create that functionality over here. So let's go ahead and choose new page. I'm dragging it to the bottom. I'm going to call this my pop-up. And since I've already got these, I'm going to go ahead and leverage them in my pop-up menu. So I just selected them all, put them onto my pop-up page, and I'm going to go ahead and assign actions to the primitives. So that's another nice thing about Crimson 3.1. We can assign actions to practically anything. So in this case, you'll remember they were go to page actions. So this first one, home, I want to go to the home page. Before I do the next three, I'm going to do a, a little shortcut. I've selected those three. I'm going to choose copy from, copy action, and I want to copy that action from that home primitive. Now I can just go into here, choose the action tab, and very quickly uh, choose what uh, target page I want. So I'm going to come into properties, action, and in this case I want box, and the last one is fan. Now you'll remember that last uh, membrane button on our G3 had a different action. In this case, it toggles the fan spin tag on and off. It's a, a flag tag. So we want to replicate that here as well. So I'm going to go in and add an action. In this case, I want it to be a push button, a toggle, and I want it to toggle that fan.spin tag. All right. One other thing, while we're in there, we might as well do, is give some situational awareness to our operators. So I'm going to change the solid color to a two-state color. And in this case, I want when fan spin is true, I want it to be green. Otherwise, let's just leave it that silver color. 
click OK, click OK. So now we've set up our pop-up menu. Um, now we need to have a way to trigger that pop-up menu to happen. You'll remember in the G3 there's this menu button in the lower left-hand corner of the HMI. Our operators are used to that, so why don't we go ahead and add that to these pages as well. Um, I'm going to go to Core Primitives and choose, you know, something just to get us started. I'll go ahead and choose Add Action. I want to do go to page again, but this time we're going to go to pop up and instead of it coming up as a normal page, I want it to come up as a pop up menu. All right, go ahead and click OK. While I'm here, I'm going to group these because maybe I still want some sort of a splash screen and I'm going to center them uh, on the page. All right. So let's add this uh, trigger to another page just so we can see how it works on our HMI and I'm sending this down to the device now. Alright, so let's go to our remote view and see how this functionality works. If I click on that area, we see this pop-up menu occur and I can choose tanks and I'll go to the tank screen. If I click this again, I can go back home. I'm only navigating between those two because those are the only two pages that I have a trigger on right now. One thing that we might want to do with our pop-up menu is give the user some way to dismiss it without making a choice. So I'll show you how to do that in uh, Crimson 3.1 as well. So let's go back over to Crimson. And the first thing, let's go ahead and get rid of this hot pink. So I'm going to come into Properties. And instead of a solid color, I don't want any fill at all. And for my edge, I'm going to take that down to zero. So now it, no, it doesn't look like it's on here anymore. In fact, I can't click on it because there is no edge and there is no fill. However, if I go ahead and drag my mouse, I can select it. I'll go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it um, on the other pages. Now, we want to make sure that this remains the frontmost item on all of our pages. And remember, the reason why we're doing this is because our operators are already used to calling up the menu in the lower left-hand corner. But to be honest, you can put this anywhere. You can make it any item uh, that can trigger the pop-up menu feature. The other thing that we said we wanted to do was give our users a way to dismiss this menu if they don't want to make a choice. So since we have some uh, space available in the lower left hand corner, why don't we go ahead and use it? So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I need to change the action that is going to happen when they touch this empty area of the pop-up menu. So in this case, we don't want go to page anymore. We instead want a user defined action and we want to choose hide all pop-ups. And so that is a variable or a function that's available to you in the systems area here. I'll click OK. And so now I've assigned that area underneath all of these tabs to be our um, dismiss. I'll go ahead and send that to my HMI. And now we no longer have the hot hot pink thing in the lower left hand corner. But if I click on that lower left hand corner, I still get my menu. I can choose any of these that I want. I can uh, turn the fan on. We can see just by looking at the menu that it's on. I can uh, navigate wherever I'd like. I still see that that fan's on. I can turn it off. And now this page doesn't dismiss, so if I want to get rid of it, I could just click on this empty area. So that's it. That's how easy it is to migrate from our G3 HMIs to our CR3000 HMIs. Look for more tips and tricks on how to use Crimson 3.1 in our next video.